Hi, I wanted to give you a sample of what my coaching might look like. And so here's a sample of my coaching for on-page SEO. I'm Angela Hausman and I'm your digital marketing coach from Market Maven. I have a PhD in marketing and I've been teaching marketing for about 30 years. For about the last 15 years, I've really focused on digital marketing. If you've not read my blog, you should check it out at marketmaven.com and you'll find a whole bunch of advice for small businesses on pretty much every aspect of digital marketing. I recently started one-on-one -on -one and group coaching sessions to help small businesses learn more about digital marketing and how they can do a better job with their own digital marketing. All of my coaching sessions, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one session or a group session, is really centered around you, your needs, the information you need to be successful, and plenty of time for you to ask questions. So normally in a coaching session, we would be stopping periodically at least once a slide to make sure that there are no questions that you have. Um, I'm going to just kind of go through the material today to give you a taste of the depth of knowledge that I have. Um, also, the other thing that we would normally have as part of this is portions where we stop to let you try out things before we move on. For today, because I'm just going to go through the material, I have an agenda that is starts with what is SEO, the parts of a website, since a website is really integral to your SEO, how to find a good hosting company, where to find fast, reliable themes, how to choose the right keywords, how to create valuable content, and the next step on your journey. Let's start by exploring what I mean by the term SEO. You may have heard this, you may have read about SEO on other digital marketing experts websites. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization and it is a series of tactics designed to help your content become discoverable online. So. You might ask, why does it matter if I'm discoverable online? Well, 63% of all, all traffic to your website comes through organic search. What that means is somebody entered a query into the search engine, probably Google, since over 90% of all search occurs on the Google platform. If somebody doesn't know about your company, and as a small business, that's probably a good bet that people don't know your company's name, where you are, or even that you exist. It's really important then for people to be able to discover you online when they search for products and services like the ones you offer. And SEO is a series of tactics that get you there. You see, search engines rank the millions and billions of pieces of content that are available online. It first searches based on the user intent. When I put, as a user, I put words into the search engine, those are where the intent comes from. So if I'm looking for a Chinese restaurant near me, Google will first look for websites that are in my regional area and list Chinese food as one of their keywords. Okay, so that's the first cut. 
The second cut then involves an, a complex algorithm. Google uses about 200 metrics to create an algorithm. It then applies that algorithm to all of the appropriate content that it finds to rank order the content. The reason that Google has been so successful as a search engine is that it does it better than almost anybody else. Users find Google searches very quickly give them the information that they're looking for. And that's because of that search algorithm. Now, if you're a company and you want to show up when someone searches for a Chinese restaurant near me, you must use those 200 factors in the algorithm in order to show up near the top. If you do not show up near the top, nobody will find you. Users commonly choose a link that is in the first three positions of search results and certainly within the first page of search results. It is very rare that a user will go beyond the first page to look for the information that they're interested in. As a small business, this is even more critical because you're not a name brand business. You don't pay thousands and millions of dollars in advertising so that everybody knows your name, like Chili's. Many, many consumers know about Chili's. And so they might pick Chili's out of the search results. Or they might even search for a Chili's restaurant near me. But as a small business, you're really struggling to get awareness among your target market. And that relies very heavily on discoverability which is a function of SEO. As I said, SEO is a complex algorithm. There are a 200 metrics that make up the search algorithm, but they're weighted. So only a handful or so of those metrics make a huge difference in your rank in the ordered results. So these are kind of in order of importance, um, but not completely. There's some variability here in different niches. But the main point you should take away is this is where you need to focus your energy if you are trying to be discoverable online. Content quality is far and above the most important factor. Obviously, a, a robot cannot determine quality. That's kind of an esoteric, but it does use metrics based on your users to determine whether your users find your content has high quality. For instance, the, pe the number of people who return, how much time they spend on your site, how many pages they view, whether they bounce, which means that they get to your site and leave without looking for anything else. These are all indicators that you have high quality or low quality content. You must produce this content on a consistent basis which means that you need to publish long form content on your website at least once a week. And we'll get into more of that later. The website must be mobile friendly and you'll hear terms like mobile first that indicates that your website looks good to mobile devices. The keywords that you use must be used effectively. <coughs> and since many users now use 
voice search with their Alexa or Google Home or another device, these phrases are now longer. So three to five words is pretty common and you don't want to overdo your use of keywords, but you need to use your keywords in things like the title, a couple of times within your content, um, one or two of the headings uh, in your content, and in the alt tags that are used for images. And if you don't know what alt tags are, then you need to take a step back or go back to my uh, sessions on website design. There are social signals such as the amount of engagement your piece of content gets on social platforms, the number of backlinks that you have to your content. Backlinks are another signal of content quality. This is where another website has linked back to your content. The higher the ranking of that website, the more value you get from the backlinks. And it is possible if you get backlinks from really bad websites, then it can actually hurt your SEO. You also want your content to load quickly. Now, we've been talking about content, and it's important to note that some of the ranking factors are a function of the cumulative amount of content on your website. Some of the ranking factors have to do with just what's on that single page. So both of these are a consideration when you want to be discoverable. All of these factors are easy to implement without any technical ability or coding or understanding of very complex structures of web pages. So this is something that anybody can do. Local businesses can then use these terms to help them become more discoverable. Let's begin our efforts for better SEO and better discoverability by looking at the construction of a website. Um, a website is a lot more than just what you see as a visitor to that website. The first aspect I want to talk about is the domain. The domain name is like an address for your house. If you have a, an address that's in a good neighborhood, it's more appealing. So, for instance, Market Maven is my domain name, and it tells you a lot about my business. For instance, that it's about marketing. Second of all, that I'm an expert. That's what the term maven means, is that you're an expert in an area. So I'm a marketing expert. From an SEO standpoint, your domain should match the content that you have within your website. So if you look at my website by going to marketmaven.com, what you will find is a lot of stuff about marketing. So my domain name fits what I do. The second thing to consider about domain is that only one person can own a domain. Again, it's like an address. If, I, if everybody could have the same address, mail would not, never get to the right person. Other people might own a website domain that you're interested in. You can either buy it from them, which can be an expensive proposition, or figure out something else that nobody owns. Um, if you are like me in the DC metro area, you are somewhat familiar with this because when the football team changed their name, many of the names that they wanted 
after they got rid of the Redskins name were already taken by other people. And in some cases, the person who owned a domain they were interested in wanted a million dollars or more for that domain. So that's why they settled on the commander's name. I don't think it was anybody's first choice, but it was available. The other thing to consider is that there's a, an extension on your domain name. So like mine is marketmaven.com. Dot coms refer to commercial enterprises. Dot govs, obviously government. Dot orgs are associations. Those are kind of the top extensions, but you also have dot info and dot store and a whole bunch of other ones. If you don't want someone to steal your traffic later on when you do a great job of marketing your website, you should buy similar names. So for instance, I own the dot org and the, the uh, dot info for my website. That makes it a little bit more difficult for someone to kind of siphon off some of my traffic. Domains are inexpensive. Usually they're under $10. The .com is going to be the most expensive. The .org and .info, sometimes they'll package those together maybe with a couple of other extensions so that you own a bunch. These renew every two to three years, although I think some places you can get your domain for just a year. Recognize that there's going to be a little bit of a discount for getting your domain for more years. And it also alleviates any problems that you might face if you forget to renew your domain. Hosting is like your house and it contains all of your contents. You can have a beautiful mansion or you can have a little trailer that's all run down and rusty. Their hosting is like your house and so some hosting is really good. It's the mansion. Other hosting is the dirty rusted out trailer. Obviously, you would like a mansion. And Google cares about this because your hosting company determines things that are in that ranking, fat, ranking algorithm, such as your uptime. Up that means how often is your website offline? It may seem like 99% is good, but in up uptime terms, it's not. You want something that is better than 99.5% uptime. I think my current hosting, which is through SiteGround, has about 99.95% .95 uptime. Now, that can be affected by things that you do wrong. Uh, and, and that is not a function of hosting. So if you make a big mistake, especially in your cPanel, you can take your site offline. That's why we normally will develop websites in what's called a sandbox, which just like a children's sandbox is a place to play. It's not visible to anyone else on the internet unless you share that sandbox with someone else. So it's a great way to construct <coughs> your website without having any damage to the, web, the website that's facing your customers. You also never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever want to use one of those website builders like Wix or Squarespace or there are a ton of them. They sound easy. They're not. 
and they have crappy SEO and there's virtually nothing you can do to improve the SEO if you use one of those website builders so never ever ever ever, ever use them. The, the really sad fact is that most small businesses at least start with those websites and then they're like well you know this digital marketing stuff it doesn't even work it's it does work trust me it does work it's a problem when you use one of those website builders because nobody can find your website unless they put in your exact domain name into the search engine Hosting can cost anywhere from about $4.95 a month to several hundred dollars a month. And that's a function of the quality of the host as well as how big your site is. In other words, how much content you have on your website. I think my hosting is something on the order of $700 a year, but you don't have to be that at that price point. My point here is that this is not a big enough expense that you should sacrifice the discoverability and quality of your website just to get free hosting. Next, you have to choose a theme, and the theme is really what determines the look and feel of your website. And so this is the first step in branding your company. You will find thousands upon thousands of website, uh, website themes online. Um, some are free, some have a small charge associated with them. My personal belief is that the free ones are much harder to use and it's going to be much harder for you to get the look and feel that you want. In many cases they have a very limited color scheme. So again really hard to brand your company. You want to look for a theme that is mobile friendly because it will automatically generate the code necessary for your website to look pretty much the same on a mobile device as it does on a desktop. So if you wanted to try that now, one of the things that you could do is to look for my website on your mobile device. Uh, it's mktmaven.com. So try that out and you'll see it looks pretty good. If you try it on a desktop, you'll see that it looks very similar. Your theme, it what you should do, and this is what I advise my consultant clients to do, is to kind of sketch out the look that you want for your website and then go look for a theme that matches that. You do not have to do any coding with most themes. They're kind of plug and play. There are even a few plugins like Elementor that extend the ability for you to just do kind of cut and paste to create really nice websites. There are even kind of fully designed templates that you can use and then just plug in your own functionality, your own content into those, those templates. So really nice between themes and plugins. You can build a really nice website without ever having to touch a line of code. Then you add content in the form of pages which are stagnant. We often talk about landing pages which are pages designed to sell your products and services online and posts 
which are updated frequently. Uh, we used to talk about post as being your blog and that term still kind of exists but this is where you're going to update long-form content at least on a weekly basis. Again, with your hosting company, you want to choose a good host with good uptime, fast speeds, and room for your business to grow. Never use website builders. Choose a host that fits your needs and your budget. And do not take the free domain that is offered by many hosting companies. That's because it's going to make it harder for you if you want to change hosting companies down the road. And this is one of the major problems with website builders is that they give you a domain and it's nearly impossible in many cases to take that domain and use it with another hosting company. Instead, you should purchase your domain names from your places like GoDaddy, um, names that match your brand. As I said with themes, you want to find a mobile friendly theme. Many of the best themes use WordPress as a content management system to create clean code. About 50% of the websites out there do use WordPress as the content management system. It's free. Um, many themes are built on WordPress so you can find themes from WordPress.org. Um, don't use the .com. WordPress.com is their website builder. WordPress.org is where they maintain WordPress and new themes and plugins and all kinds of things to help you build a better website. Theme Forest is another great place to get themes. Also Genesis is a great source of themes for your website. Most paid themes cost less than a hundred dollars and Many are one-time purchases. I've started to see a few themes that have a monthly charge. So if you download the theme again or you want continued support, you pay the monthly fee. But if you're only going to install it once and don't need support, you still only pay the one-time fee. Again, this is not a huge amount of money <clears throat> and the trade-off that you get for this hundred dollars or less is much less frustration. So paid themes are easy to use. They're very stable and they're updated over time. So as <clears throat> WordPress changes, they will update the theme to take advantage of new options within WordPress. Most of them have support available so that you can reach out to the developer of that theme to get help if you have problems. Many paid themes also offer sample content to get you up and running fast. So you can download pages like home pages, landing pages, a blog page. You can download those along with your theme and then you can it makes it easier to change the content while still keeping some of the design issues. So for things like it may come with a bunch of images that you really like to use and so by downloading this sample content you can just change the text and keep some of the images. 
as I said, keywords are the element that helps Google determine that your content matches the intent of the user. So finding the right keywords is really important. Google offers the, a free keyword planning tool which is available in the Google Ads platform. You do not have to pay for ads in order to use Keyword Planner, but you do have to create an account in Google Ads in order to use the Keyword Planner. There are several other keyword planning tools that say they're free. For the most part, there's a catch in using them. So I still recommend to clients that they use the Keyword Planner. Again, keywords are actually phrases between three and five words generally. You want specific keywords like special occasion dresses, versus just dresses. Part of the reason for this being specific as well as it being um, what we call long tail, in other words multiple words, is because best practices is to only use a keyword once. So if you're creating content every week, that's 56 pieces of content a year it's nearly impossible to find 56 keywords, let alone 56 every year. By making these long-tailed, you can have unique keywords for each piece of content without getting into the weeds with weird keywords that nobody is ever going to search for. What you're looking for in the Keyword Planner is phrases with low competition and high search volume, although this is kind of a unicorn. So what you would like is to find keywords with good search volume and low to moderate competition. Again, the Keyword Planner gives you this. The other thing about the Keyword Planner is that it will suggest additional keywords that might help you. Most companies keep a list of kind of generic keywords that then they can make long tail for each individual post that they create. You can also try finding trending topics on social media or in Google Trends, which is another free tool that they operate. Think like your target market. So you need to listen to them. Social media is more about listening than it is talking. So look for what your followers are talking about, even if it doesn't impact your particular company. What are they talking about? And then you can create content that matches that. Like I said, the single biggest factor when it comes to SEO is creating valuable content on a consistent basis. This means you need to post frequently, at least once a, work, uh, once a week. I generally try and post five times a week, so I post every business day at least one piece of content, sometimes more than one piece of content. This has really helped my SEO. I now have more than 600 visitors per day, pretty much every day coming to my website, which for a blog is a lot of visits per day. And that keeps going up every year. It also supports my five-figure income that I make from my website. You want to create valuable content, which means doing research um, and adding links 
to other resources online. So for instance, when I talk about SEO and not using the website builders, I'll embed a backlink into my content to a higher authority, probably SEO specific expert who says the exact same thing and provides more information about why you shouldn't use a website builder. These resources show that you have authority and builds trust with your target market. It also is a factor that Google uses in its ranking. If you have backlinks to high authority websites, it says, you know, this content must be valuable because they have researched and found other resources. Kind of like using a citation in a research paper in school. You should shoot for about 1,500 or more words per post. One of the things that we know about content that is in the first position is that on average it's just over 2,000 words. Think about solving visitors problems and the needs of different customers and their different phases in the decision-making process. So if you look at this image that I created, you'll see that it's kind of a, a series of circles which is very different than the traditional way of looking at the steps in the the decision making process uh, and this reflects kind of more modern thinking about the sales pyramid or the the conversion pyramid or however you want to talk about it but it starts with awareness and this is where SEO really comes in is creating awareness of your brand's existence. Then consumers go through a consideration phase where they think about whether this is the right product for them. They will make a decision to purchase or not purchase the product and then ultimately they may repeat the process over and over again which is great for you. Each phase in this process requires different types of content. So at the awareness stage you're really talking about your brand and what your brand does, what problems it solves for the customer. At the consideration stage Consumers may be more interested in how your product compares to competitors' product or how it fits with products they already use. At the purchase decision phase, things like how quick can you get it to me? Do you charge for shipping? What kinds of credit cards or other credit payments do you take, like PayPal or cryptocurrency? And then at the repeat purchase stage, you're really thinking about reminding them, hey, you bought this three weeks ago, you're probably running low, how about you come back and, and buy some more of this product. So you need content for each of these phases and also for different customers. So maybe you're a hair salon and you have male and female and kids, you have color and highlights and cuts and shampoos and treatments. So customers are interested in different things and so you want to create pages, landing pages and blog content that addresses each of those aspects. So for instance, if you have customers who are interested in coloring, talk about new trends in hair color, new brands of hair color, how hair color affects your of other aspects of your life. For instance, now there's a big debate over whether to grow gray or cover your gray. 
there's conversations about how to take care of colored hair. But that's kind of the kind of stuff that's not going to be interesting to, for instance, your kids or the parents of kids. So think about what are the needs of the various customers and create content about those needs. Some of the tools that I like to use to help with crafting content is chat GPT. I would never ever ever in a million years publish chat GPT content but when I start thinking about a topic chat GPT is a great resource for crafting first drafts. It also helps me think more broadly about my topic rather than narrowing it down too much too soon. I use Canva a lot for images and infographics. It's a great tool to help with that. Um, speaking of which, this image that you see here was actually crafted in ChatGPT by a, a product that they have that works with them. It's called DAL-E. Um, and it's great for creating images that are going to attract a lot of attention. Canva has images and infographics, but they are a little less imaginative. Adobe Express creates both visual and video content. Um, both Canva and Express have free options. They're somewhat limited, but you can start out with them for free or you can try uh, a 30-day trial to get more of the power of the products. Another source of information about content creation is scan competitive posts on social media, scan their websites, what are they talking about? Um, what is getting the most engagement on social media? Which pieces of blog content have the most comments? And then of course listen to social media conversations so that you can feed off of those conversations. So here are some of the things that are the next steps. Uh, if this were a live coaching session, we would have spent more time working on individual aspects of the things I talked about so that it's kind of hands-on. We would have had lots of time for questions. For now, your next steps are to learn more about our coaching program at marketmaven.com backslash coaching. You can sign up for one of our one-on-one -on -one or group coaching classes using the Market Maven Contact Us option. If you want to see more free posts and free resources that are available for you, if you go to marketmaven.com, you will see that there is a blog, strategy blog and it's by category. So you can learn what you want. You can also see whether this kind of coaching program is right for you. Do I have the kind of expertise that goes beyond what you already know about digital marketing and makes it worthwhile to hire me? The prices for coaching start at $60 an hour. Usually each session is an hour long and each topic is generally multiple sections. If you'd rather to explore done-for-you solutions, you can talk to me by contacting me at Angie at MarketMaven.com. The done-for-you solutions, i.e. consulting, are based on what your individual needs are and your budget. So these are the few options for you as you go forward and determine whether you want to do coaching, whether you want to sign up for coaching, or whether you just want to learn more about digital marketing. 
thanks for viewing this video and for coming today and I hope that I have conveyed to you the value inherent in doing digital marketing coaching.